today from Wembley Stadium in London, England. It's the NFL International Series on EA Sports. We'll see Gardner Minshew and the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on Tua Tungabailoa and the Miami Dolphins. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars. are underway taking it about the one oh, a dangerous return man showing it here Jaguars take over first and ten. here's the Jaguars offense for the first time with Gardner Minshew the Washington State product leading the way and what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff but with him as well and I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what did the offensive coordinator say right off the top? He's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. Minshew, first and ten. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 19 yards right off the bat and a quick first down. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass catching abilities. And if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Out of the gun is Minshew. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 26. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defending the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. On first down, Robinson. And down inside the 15 he goes. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. On the run, a 
it's Robinson. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. The last run got six, now second and four. Here's Minshew, and he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Christian Wilkins. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. So third and long after the sack, tough road for Minshew and the Jags. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Escaping the pressure right. He's got it complete to Thompson. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. So they decline it as that will bring up fourth. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. So on fourth down, Jags kicker Josh Lambeau comes on. A 29-yard attempt. And Lambo will put this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3 0 lead. Three. Dolphins, nothing. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. John, now after the main field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. And this carries into the end zone. And yeah, this will be a touchback as Grant opts not to return it. The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama, at the helm. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of it and really want to play well for him. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now the former Washington Husky, here's Miles Gaskin. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz it? Do I need to pressure it? How do I gain an advantage on this? This taken in by Jakeem Grant. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. First and 10. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Jaguars three, Dolphins nothing.
They'll run now with Gaskin. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. Got to give a nod of appreciation to some of those guys up front over on that left side. Several key blocks sprung him. No appreciation for the guys from the backside that didn't allow any leakage and if anybody could run him down from the nah, backside. They're, they're at the kids' table. Okay, so so front side guys, good yeah. back side guys. Man, that, that's what you're supposed to do. I've had better. Okay, either way, worked out quite well, didn't it? A nice sizable game. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 34. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just scared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. From the gun, it's Tua. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Josh Allen credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Tua sets up to pass it. He's got a man. It's Williams. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. But we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. Two and now on first down. He'll get this into the hands of Breida. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. This is Gaskin on the carry. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard in the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Here's Gaskin. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Fourth down now after a loss of two. This defense is really flowing around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. So on fourth Jason down, Sanders Dolphin kicker Jason Sanders comes on. A 33-yarder from the left hash. The kick by Sanders is good. And the Dolphins are going to tie the score at three. So 
So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Go a little tennis on them. I know you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back at them. We get a backhand. What was the serve? It, what was the return on It them? was a backhand. I yeah, like a that really one. good backhand. Get some nice top spin on the a little, little bit. bit. A little I bit. love it. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Jason Sanders. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Over first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But we also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Minshew and the Jags now with a first and ten at their 25-yard line. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to, give the, need to get the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Minshew on target here to Chark, and he'll be stopped right at midfield. 11 yards there for Jacksonville, and a first down as well. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking to get that one to Chris Thompson, and that'll bring up second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. To the left side here for Eifert. Five yards, now it's third and five. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. play on the completion got them half of what they needed now here's a tough third and five it'll be Minshew again and Eifert has it and he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 30 now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half to settle for three last drive hoping the second go around ends in six in good position first and ten again Minshew looking to throw the throw taken in by Cole and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 another big gainer that time this one goes for 19 yards Jaguars first down first and ten at the 11 yard line
Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. Looking to throw it. Minshew. That's complete right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Second and six with the ball on the seven. Minshew sets to throw. This will be caught at about the five. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. To Tyler Eifert. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and three. So we've reached halftime in a low-scoring affair. Just a pair of field goals. 3-3 three, three is our score. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Not too much to show you scoring-wise in that first half. Just a couple of field goals make up all the scoring, where the teams are ready to go at half number two. So to bring it your way, let's get right back out to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. As they say here in London, all to play for is back underway in the second half. Jakeem Grant now to return. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. At their own 31 yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breida. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on the play. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Going to the air, tongue of Iloa. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. handoff it's Gaskin and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48 seven yards on the pickup there and it'll leave him with a second and three 
Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Another run with Gaskin. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. First and 10 at their road. Here comes the Jags offense now, time for their first possession of half number two. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Now a handoff to start it out, Robinson. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. They'll run again here with Robinson. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Now Minshew. And that is incomplete. But well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those, but the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Here's Logan Cook now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and it'll be Dolphin football. Miami set to take over. And Charles, we've seen almost three full quarters now, and neither offense can really get it going. Neither has hit the end zone, and neither side seemingly can make that big play. But the game hasn't been devoid of action because these two defenses, they've taken over and they've slugged it out. But I think you're exactly right. We're at that stage of the game now. Where one of these offenses, if they make a big play, that could be the difference. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start on the ground with Breda. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. 28-yard line. 
The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here's Tua. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Devontae Parker brings up third down. That's the end of the third quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. I'm hey, not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, if they want to ride him down the stretch, he should have fresh legs. back to him on first down and down he goes at the 49 a three-yard pickup give credit to the defense for stringing that play out and they gave up no cutback angle you know he was trying to dart through no place for him to go a nice job there only giving up a three-yard gain three yards on that last carry here's second and seven Now a handoff looking right. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Two are going to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10 at their own 11. They begin the drive with Robinson. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. From the 17, here's second and four. Thank <laughs> you. 
The throw over the middle, taken in. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big play on the catch and run, covering 34 yards. That's a real nice job right there, working the middle of the field, working against those safeties. And you know, partner, if you get your hips turned the wrong way, big plays can result. And a big play resulted right there. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. They'll run here with Robinson. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Minshew with a throw caught by Eifert, the tight end. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run it now with Robinson. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Minshew, he's going to keep it himself. And he stopped immediately there. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for the lead in the final stages. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Dolphins three. Well, we still wait on the first touchdown of the game, but a second field goal now makes it a 6-3 score. Yeah, I know a lot of people would call this the definition of winning ugly. To me, this is gorgeous. I'm a defender, right? I love these kind of games. The tension is high. Who's going to make the play to win it? And right now, that field goal, be the advantage they need. Josh now after the made field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. This is Jakeem Grant. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Dolphins take over first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. So Tua and the Dolphins down six to three, a minute 11 to go. Now they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. He'll look to throw. 
It's complete to Parker, left side. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. comes in as that one falls incomplete. Good job, good job. Well, let's see who this is on. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They'll look to throw. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. In a two-minute drill, we often talk about taking care of the football, but sometimes it's just a matter of who wants it more. How about him going up top on a 50-50 ball and taking it away for a big play? Would be a long field goal try from here as they try to hustle to the line. He's back to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of six there on first. Very sharp here to start this drive, three for three. Yeah, I like the way he's running this two-minute drill. Very sharp, very precise in throwing the football. Two are going to try and go quickly here. To throw is Tua. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Thrown away and incomplete. He was covered by C.J. Henderson. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Four seconds to go. This would send us to overtime. And his kick is indeed good. And the Dolphins have tied things up here in the fourth. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. 
Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. The situation is simple. It is sudden death from here on out. We had two stops defensively. The next score, whatever it is, wins this game. I can't wait to see how the defense decides to play this because knowing that the next point you give up lose the game for you, I expect them to be more aggressive. Not just play a normal situational defense, but go after them, attack them a little bit because otherwise the offense is trying to find their way to get downfield and kick a field goal. Don't sit back and wait for them to make their plays. I think the defense needs to go after them. Charles Davis says maybe they go aggressive. Tackle that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. So that'll back him up five. Still second First throw here in overtime. Got an open man, Keelan Cole. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And that will be incomplete. Intended for Keelan Cole. Incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Here's Logan Cook now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to him, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done. Now part two. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. First throw of the OT session for Tua. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Shreds the tackle. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way.
Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That first good for 20 and a first down. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ends up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And to give this time to the tailback. And a solid run down inside the 30. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. They've had some success here in overtime with this opening drive running the football right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there available to them. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves him at third and one. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, it's Tua. Oh, so close but incomplete. Could have been a big turnover in overtime if he'd held on. Instead, though, it's fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. From the left hash, this from 46. And now the Jags get a signal for another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. So a big one coming now for Jason Sanders from the left hash. This from 46. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. on the edge of their seats quite a game and it's rare that you get a game into overtime then it doesn't turn out to be a dandy right that's what we saw here and just what you were talking about a long field goal to win it so definitely not a gimme so there was tension all the way through until the ball went through the post but it did go through the post ice water was in his veins That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gawden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say cheerio from London.